Welcome everybody to the service for Sunday the 9th of October, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. And I do pray that we will all be truly blessed as we share in this time together. Looking at the parish this coming week, the birthdays on the 10th of October, John Tate and Warren Bowden, we do wish you both a very happy birthday and that the year ahead will be blessed. And then anniversaries on the 11th of October, Andy and Madeline Collins. Congratulations on the celebration and we do pray that there would be many more to come. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. 
Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together the collect. God, the source of all power, your people find wholeness in your love. Grant that in our trials we will seek Christ and receive the gift of healing with grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. The first reading this morning is taken from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1 and verses 4 to 7, Jeremiah's letter to the Jews in Babylonia. I wrote a letter to the priests, the prophets, the leaders of the people, and to all the others whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken away as prisoners from Jerusalem to Babylonia. The letter said, The Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those people whom he allowed Nebuchadnezzar to take away as prisoners from Jerusalem in, to Babylonia, Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what you grow in them. Marry and have children, then let your children get married, so that they may also have children. You must increase in numbers and not decrease. Work for the good of the cities where I have made you go as prisoners. Pray to me on their behalf, because if they are prosperous, you will be prosperous too. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 66 verses 1 to 11. O shout with joy to our God, all the earth. Sing to the honor of his name, and give him glory as his praise. Say to God, how fearful are your works. Because of your great might, your enemies shall cower before you. All the earth shall worship you, and sing to you, and sing praises to your name. Come then and see what God has done, 
How terrible are his dealings with the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They crossed the river on foot. Then they were joyful because of him. By his power he rules forever. His eyes keep watch on the nations, and rebels shall never rise against him. O oh, bless our God, you peoples, and cause his praises to resound. Who has held our souls in life? Who has not suffered our feet to slip? For you have proved us, O oh God. You have tried us as silver is tried. You have brought us into the net. You laid sharp torment on our loins. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of liberty. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning's second reading is taken from 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 8 to 15. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Hear the word of the Lord. The good news is proclaimed in the 17th chapter of St. Luke, beginning at verse 11. Glory to Christ our Saviour. As Jesus made his way to Jerusalem, he went along the border between Samaria and Galilee. He was going into a village when he was met by ten men suffering from a dreaded skin disease. They stood at a distance and shouted, Jesus, Master, take pity on us. Jesus saw them and said to them, Go and let the priests examine you. On the way, they were made clean. When one of them saw that he was healed, he came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked him. The man was a Samaritan. Jesus said, There were ten men who were healed. Where are the other nine? Why is this foreigner the only one who came back to give thanks to God? And Jesus said to him, Get up and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us, for a moment, cast our minds to the Gospel reading which I just read. The biblical account of the ten lepers is a testimony to the healing power of Jesus Christ. Moreover, it shows the gratitude of a condemned man who was brought from death to life. This is what makes the story of the ten lepers different from all other healing stories 
of the New Testament. Of all those whom Jesus healed and raised from the dead, only this poor leper returned to say, Thank you. In this way, he serves as an example for how we ought to live each day in gratitude of God's redeeming love. This is what I would like us to think about this morning. Let us look more closely at the story. As we all know, leprosy was a dreaded disease in Jesus' day, mostly because it was not clearly understood. One biblical commentary has the following to say, Their leprosy was not necessarily Hansen's disease, the terrible wasting disease that we think of today as leprosy. Biblical leprosy includes skin diseases such as ringworm, psoriasis, leucoderma, and vitiligo. The essence of this is that while some skin diseases are potentially fatal, others are harmless. Lacking precise medical knowledge, the first century Jews lumped them all into one category and declared the infected person spiritually unclean and socially unfit. For many, it was a death sentence. It was assumed that they were being punished for something they had done wrong. So they were banished, not to be associated with, but avoided, lest they spread their contamination and their condemnation to others. Some things just never change. We still tend to ostracize those we do not understand. We judge other cultures as odd, other customs as peculiar. For example, have you ever thought about how we call citizens of other countries foreigners and non-citizens in this country aliens? What is a foreign country except a country that is not our own? An alien. That sounds like E.T., someone from outer space. Nowadays, many actually equate being a Muslim with being a terrorist. Yet most Muslims in this country are God-fearing, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens. And yet, because they practice a different faith, we draw a line between us and them. We ostracize that which we do not understand. As for lepers in the first century, the law of Moses was clear. Put out of the camp every leper and everyone who has an issue and whoever is unclean by the dead. For the Hebrews, it was a matter of life and death. An infectious disease could wipe out a whole village. And so, once declared to be a leper, the individual was banished as a primitive means of quarantine. Cast out the afflicted, lest they afflict others. Lepers were forced to live in the wilderness. They were to dress distinctively, and if approached by others, they were to shout out a clear warning, unclean, unclean. This comes right out of the book of Leviticus. The leper in whom the plague is shall wear torn clothes and the hair of his head shall hang loose. He shall cover his upper lip and shall cry, Unclean, unclean. Leviticus chapter 13 verse 45 The suffering of the leper in biblical times was due, in many cases, not so much to the severity of the disease as to the way that the leper was treated by religious society. Today, we have better methods of treating skin afflictions, but do we still isolate and quarantine those we judge to be unclean? The poor, the mentally challenged, certainly experience the world differently from us. Are we afraid that whatever is about them will rub off on us? It is sad and contrary to the image of God in which we are created. God, after all, is love. And the nature of love 
is to seek out loving relationships with others, no matter how foreign or different or displeasing they may be to us. In biblical times, once excluded from the family and friends, lepers sought out the company of other lepers. This bears witness to an innate longing of the human spirit for community, love and support. And so lepers congregated in the wilderness to comfort and care for each other as they suffered and died in exile. It was a small leper colony such as this that Jesus encountered on his way through the Samaritan wilderness. Ten lepers dressed in tattered rags, their bodies covered with lesions, crying out at the top of their voices. For some reason, when Jesus approached, they did not cry out, unclean, as they were supposed to. Instead, they cried, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. How did they know who Jesus was? Why did they not warn him of the danger of their presence? Luke does not say. He only says that in answer to their plea, Jesus responded with mercy. After all, this is the nature of Jesus, to love the unlovable, to touch the untouchable, to seek out the least, the last and the lost. He told the lepers, go and show yourselves to the priests. This is significant in two ways. One, he treated the lepers in the same way in which he treated everyone else. In other words, he did not criticize them or question whether or not they were worthy of his time and attention. This is one of the hallmarks of God's kingdom. Peter had the following to say, Truly I perceive that God doesn't show favoritism, but in every nation he who fears him and works righteousness is acceptable to him. Acts chapter 10 verse 34 The only prerequisite to receiving God's grace and love is your need of him. This is precisely what Jesus had told the Pharisees. Those who are healthy have no need for a physician, but those who are sick do. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Matthew chapter 9 verse 12 So Jesus told the lepers, Go and show yourselves to the priests. The second reason this is significant is that Jesus did not seek to circumvent the authority of the church. If it was the priest's responsibility to declare an individual unclean in the first place, it was up to the priest to determine whether or not the individual had been healed. Again, this was in accordance with the law and Jesus didn't challenge that. In the Sermon of the Mount, he told his disciples, Don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. And so he told the lepers, Go and show yourselves to the priests. They turned in obedience to Jesus' word, and in that instant they were healed. But according to Luke, one of the lepers, seeing that he was healed, turned back to Jesus and praised God in a loud voice. Luke says, He fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. What was it about this one leper that caused him to return to the scene of the miracle to say thanks? Was he more grateful than the rest? Was he more righteous? One of the strong parental injunctions of childhood is the message, don't forget to say thank you. Do you think that this leper had better parenting than the others? Don't forget to say thank you. It's a word we ought to be shouting to the other nine lepers. It is also a word we need to hear ourselves. 
don't get caught up in day-to-day busyness of life that you fail to honor the one who has made possible for you the promise of eternal life. When Henry Mancini, the musician, turned 65, his daughter Felice composed a little musical birthday card and sang it in tribute to her father. It goes like this. Sometimes, although not often enough, we reflect upon the good things and our thoughts always revolve around those we love. And I think about those people who mean so much to me, who for so many years have made me very happy. And I think about the times I've forgotten to say thank you and just how much I love them. So, before we rush off to see the priest, that is, before we become so absorbed in trying to fulfill all of the expectations others have of us, let us take a moment to marvel at the beauty of God's creation and bask in the warmth of God's love and be grateful. The good news is Jesus died for you. He has brought you from death to life. Let us not forget to say thank you. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. At this time, these words take on a huge poignancy as we live through these days of high food prices. We pray that in a world of abundance, where people still hunger, that all will share. As written in the Gospel, we can come to you to feed our hunger and satiate our thirst. We give thanks today and pray for the world, the church, and for those we love and for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, the world has become a place of fear and trepidation. Your people are anxious. Choices must be made and the changes to lifestyle that may become necessary. The cost of living is unmanageable for many. High electricity and fuel prices and even eating are becoming an issue. We pray for peace throughout the world and particularly for Ukraine and for the dangers to the world this brings. And in this time for the people of Pakistan, some facing starvation and disease. We pray that leaders are raised up who have a heart for the people and bring peace and sustenance to their lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the church here and for the celebrations we have enjoyed recently. We pray for all clergy, for Mark and Ashwin, for Melania and David, and for all who, are, who may be recognizing God's call. We give thanks at all who make our church a living place who have and are responding to that call. In these difficult days, we lift the importance of Jesus' cares, our Bible studies, and all places where we gather and hear the calling of God. We give thanks for all who lead and serve. Other jobs may seem low in status, but of high value in the eyes of God and appreciated by all those around you. We give thanks for those who put out chairs, who clean and tidy, hand out information, arrange the flowers, make the tea and wash up. You are giving praise to God in all you do. It says in Matthew 20, Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we love, for our friends and for those we know who need our prayers today. Help us to be there when needed, celebrating the high and happy parts of life and supportive during the lowest and most miserable times. We remember all in special need and bring before you those ill at home or in hospital and those who care for them. We lift before you those who feel no one cares for or about them, for the unemployed, the poor, the lonely, the depressed, and those suffering injustice and neglect. In a moment of silence, let us pray for those persons in need that you know who need your prayers today.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and our part in your kingdom, Lord. There are times when we fail to be the people of faith you would have us to be. Times when we have passed on the other side or just looked the other way. Times when our purses have been gripped so tightly to avoid the outstretched hand. And times when critical words have replaced compassion and kindness. We have just received your forgiveness, Lord, but we beg to be reminded of our failing in order to live out our faith. Nothing is hidden from your eyes. Your light shines into the darkness of this world and into the shadows of our hearts. You see our thoughts, our motives, our words and actions, and we confess that we must, must cause you sadness in our response to all that has been given to us. Forgive us, we pray, and by your grace and mercy, bring us to that place where your light may shine from us and reveal nothing but your eternal love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mercies never come to an end They are new every morning New every morning Great is thy faithfulness O oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness Fast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. We come now to the celebration of the Sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. 
He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Who in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
the body of Christ, broken for us. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for us. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with us now and always. Amen. So, dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.